very good morning to everyone my name is Falgun and today we are going to study a new chapter and the chapter's name is crop production and management okay so let us begin the chapter okay so before starting before getting into this chapter let us first understand what is the meaning of crop or what is crop crop are nothing but they are the plants of a same kind that are grown and cultivated as a source of food in a large cultivable land in a large scale in a large scale if a particular plant is grown in a particular land okay that is that is called crop okay <clears throat> So I hope you are clear with the topic. Uh, what is crop? Yes. Let's move further. Now, let us understand how many types of crops are there. Types of crop. There are two types of crops are there. One is rabi, other is kharif crop. So let us first understand what is rabi crops. The crops which are grown in winter season. Okay. The particular crops which are grown in winter season that is called uh, rabi crop rabi crops okay so specifically if i consider the seasonal uh, season uh, months then it would be like october to march okay if a crops if any crops which are grown from october to the march yes those uh, kind of crops are called as an rabi crops example wheat and gram okay now coming to the kharif crop Kharif crop are those crops which are sown in rainy season. Yes. And the season is like from July to October. Okay. Example of the Kharif crop is paddy and maize. Okay. So coming uh, to the next slide. Coming to the next slide. See for, cultiva for cultivating any crop we need to follow some procedures. Okay. So some activities or uh, rather i can say that okay so what are those activities we need to follow to perform a successful uh, cultivation okay so first we need to prepare the soil okay first step is we need to prepare the particular uh, soil okay so then we need to then uh, next uh, next step comes sowing sowing of the seeds okay then we need to add the manure and fertilizers okay then comes irrigation different uh, crops have different pattern of uh, irrigation irrigation is nothing but is the uh, it's a giving the uh, giving or providing water to the crop for the growth okay and protection from the weeds weeds are weeds is what weeds are nothing but they are the unwanted plant which we we don't particularly need in our crop field okay they basically suck up all the nutrients from the from the crop so that's why we need to eliminate all the weeds from the uh, from the field or or cultivate uh, cultivating field yes then comes harvesting once we'll be talking each concept uh, detaily so uh, let us uh, let us only concentrate the steps okay so first step again i'm saying first step is soil preparation second is sowing third is adding manure and fertilizers uh, fertilizers uh, fourth is irrigation fifth is protection from weeds sixth is uh, sixth step is harvesting seventh step is storage okay let us discuss each of the step briefly let us move to the next slide what is soil preparation what is soil preparation soil preparation okay so this it involves loosening and tilling of the soil okay first of all we need to loosen up the soil okay and loosen up the soil and we need to till up the soil like and okay so the process of the loosening the process of loosening and turning of the soil is called what is called is called tilling or plowing okay once again what is tilling or plowing the the process of loosening and turning of the soil as uh, it is shown in this uh, particular uh, photo you can see 
okay the loosening of uh, loosening and turning of the soil is called tilling or plowing this is done by the by using a simple tool that is plow okay plow is uh, traditionally it was used plow but nowadays we are using uh, tractors or cultivators okay so let us move to the next slide okay let us understand how this plow works or what is the structure of this plow okay plow is a device plow is a device it is used for used by the farmers for for different purposes not only for the for the loosening of the soil but also it is used uh, such as adding the fertilizers okay uh, adding the fertilizer into the field we are using using plow for adding the fertilizers into the field as well okay for tilling and loosening as i have mentioned earlier okay second point is what it is also used for adding the fertilizers to the soil okay it is also used as uh, uh, back now only we have understood we have discussed about this right and it also helps in removing the weeds, uh, weeds sorry it is also used in removing the weeds okay and also it used for uh, scrapping of the soil okay so it it is having some uh, kind of uh, triangular kind of iron strip this is this is what a triangular iron strip this is called pro plow ser okay plow ser which is uh, one of the most important part of the plow okay and plow shaft is the main uh, is the main part of the plow which is which is made using the log of wood this is the plow this is the plow shaft okay then comes what then comes then comes the handle okay the other end is attached to the beam which is placed on the bull's neck okay this is the end which is attached to the beam of the bull's neck okay this is about the plow next move uh, to the next slide let us understand about hoe hoe is uh, hoe is uh, what it is a tool that is used to dig up the soil to remove the weeds and also loosen up the soil before planting a sapling okay so this is the particular kind uh, particular uh, tool that is used to uh, used to dig up the soil and to remove the weeds here in this diagram you can able to see uh, this farmer is uh, removing the, all the weeds from the field by using the hoe okay so i hope you have understood uh, about the hoe let let us understand the uh, next uh, topic that is uh, cultivator see ho and uh, ho and plow are very very traditional ways to uh, remove all the weeds and uh, everything okay but nowadays we don't have that much of time okay so nowadays we are using cultivator okay nowadays we are using cultivator this is how the cultivator looks okay this is the tractor uh, cultivator is attached to the tractor okay it is attached to the tractor so basically cultivator is attached to the tractor and helps in loosening the soil cultivator helps in loosening the soil cultivators are used in, instead of plow and since they are faster as i mentioned earlier time is very crucial thing we don't have uh, that much of time as we were having before so that's why we are using cultivators to, basically it reduces uh, time period of uh, of plowing okay so instead of plowing uh, instead of uh, plow uh, we are using cultivators next step is sowing so what is sowing first of all let us understand what is sowing okay sowing is the process okay sowing is the process of planting the seeds in the soil okay we are planting after plowing we are planting a seed into the soil and we are covering it up as a result seed germinates then it it becomes the uh, plant sapling then to the uh, mature plant right so in this way the process of planting the seeds in the soil is called sowing okay the seeds are sowed in the soil that is loosened by the cultivator or plow understood first the uh, first the soil is loosened out by the cultivator or plow then the sowing occurs after that we have uh, after once the seed is placed inside the soil and then the soil uh, the then the seed is covered up by the soil so this process is sowing coming to the next slide we need to first understand we need to first understand how to uh, after, how to differentiate the good quality seeds from the bad quality seeds or yes bad quality seeds 
the quality of the seed is important factor that determines the crop yield absolutely right so the the good quality seeds provide good yield at the end of the end of the cultivation okay the bad quality will provide the bad yield will ultimately gives rise to the bad yield so selection of the good quality is very essential step in this uh, in this uh, cultivation right so this selection of seed can be done uh, by a simple step okay all the seeds you get from the market you have to place that in the place uh, that in the uh, that in the water okay the seeds with a good quality will sink up the seeds this is the bowl if i place all the seeds okay seeds this is the water seeds with a good quality will sink up sink up into the bottom okay but seeds with a bad quality will be floating at the surface of the water okay because the seeds with the bad quality will, are hollow in nature they don't have anything inside of the seed they are hollow okay they have they have air nothing but air that is the reason why they sink in uh, at the at the top of the water so that is how we can differentiate the good quality seeds from the bad quality seeds okay coming to the next uh, part that is traditional tools okay how uh, previously farmer was using traditional tools uh, for sowing okay so see from here we can start before the advent of the modern technology modern technology yes or modern agriculture machinery whatever you can say traditional tools were used by the farmers absolutely right okay before this uh, technology arrived okay uh, farmers were using traditional tools for the sowing for everything for every process of the of the agriculture yes so what are the tools they used to using okay see the traditional tool used to sow the seeds was the like a funnel okay here the farmer is holding the seeds this is the seeds okay he is placing into the funnel like shape shape structure this is the funnel like shape structure okay it is having the narrow narrow end okay once the seed is placed into the funnel the seeds will be going down into the into the funnel and it will be uh, it will be going into the soil okay that is how seeds will be placed okay once the seeds so let us uh, let us see this okay once the seed seeds were uh, put into the funnel they would go to two to three tubes having the serpents as i said now okay the ends will pierce into the soil and place the uh, place the seeds there okay once the seeds are uh, seeds are placed in the funnel okay then the seeds directly go into the soil okay as it is having serpents uh, as the funnel is having serpents so seeds will directly go into the soil after once the uh, once the seeds placed into the soil and the soil will be covered up or or the seeds will be covered cover up by the soil okay so that is how traditional it was uh, traditional this process was occurring traditionally they were using this but nowadays what we are using we are using uh, as technology uh, technology advancement occurred so we are using seed drill okay nowadays we are using seed drill so by using this seed drill we are having a much more benefits uh, than uh, than than traditional tools okay so seed drills are used for the sowing with the help of the tractors okay this is a tractor this is a tractor okay this is a farmer who is using this this particular instrument which is uh, attached to the tractor is the seed drill okay so so basically it ensures that seeds are sown uniformly okay so once we use the seed drill okay this this seed drill ensures that seeds are uniformly placed as a result uh, there is no overcrowding in a small area okay so that is the main uh, uh, point we need to point it out at the particular depth okay and covered by the soil after sowing okay so this is the this is the this is the structure or this is the this is how the seed drill looks okay this is how it performs okay this is these are the benefits of using seed drills nowadays okay so coming to the next uh, slide let us see manure once sowing has been done 
it is necessary to use manures or fertilizers see the land rarely any land with the any land having uh, the good uh, fertility okay it is very rare so so to increase the fertility of the soil of the land okay we are using manure or fertilizers okay so let us just learn how this works okay manures and fertilizers are the substances these are the chemical substances okay that are added to the soil to increase the fertility okay the main reason we are using manure or fertilizer is to increase the fertility of the soil okay while manures are made by the decomposition of the organic substance okay manures are made naturally and fertilizers are are are, are the inorganic chemicals which is made artificially okay this is the uh, this is the point wh what we need to understand okay so many of you might be having the having doubt in between manure and fertilizers for that i i have separately made uh, a slide which is differentiating the manure and fertilizers okay so this is the differences between manure and fertilizers so firstly let us understand about the fertilizer okay fertilizer is an organic salt okay it is an organic inorganic salt sorry my bad fertilizer is inorganic salt okay while manure is prepared from organic matter such as human feces or human waste cow dung and farm waste okay by combining these uh, these uh, matters this manure is made okay which is which is organic in nature okay fertilizers are inorganic salt so here fertilizers are manufactured in factories okay fertilizers are manufactured in factories while manures can be prepared in farms okay fertilizers are added in comparatively smaller quantities okay smaller quantities of fertilizers will be added to the land because they are high in high in nutrient value but we have to use large quantity of manure because there is a very less nutrient value or nutrient content in the man manure okay to fulfill the nutrient uh, nutrient nutrient availability of the crop we need to use much more manure to fulfill the new nu nutrient uh, um, nutrient content okay so coming to the next slide or moving to the next slide uh, we need to understand crop rotation so what is crop rotation first of all let us understand crop rotation is a phenomena in which we plant we do not plant same plant continuously in the field or we do not cultivate the same kind of crop continuously okay we have to alter the cultivation of the crops let us take uh, let me explain you with giving a with giving an example okay in first year this the this is the field let us take okay this is the particular field okay at first i have i have uh, grown i have cultivated here wheat okay these are the wheat okay first year at first year okay okay in second year instead of cultivating instead of cultivating wheat i cultivated sugarcane okay in second year i cultivated sugarcane in third year again i cultivated wheat the same wheat so if i if i cultivate in this manner if i cultivate alternative uh, alternative years if i cultivate same kind of crop alter in alternate form or alternate years okay so the the productivity of uh, crop will not decrease or the yield will not decrease due to the due to the regaining of the nutrients okay if i cultivate same kind of crop continuously then the nutrients will be exhausted from the uh, nutrients will be exhausted from the soil which is required by the particular one kind of crop okay as a result uh, as a result ongoing uh, the productivity of that particular uh, crop will be decreased to avoid that we are uh, we are uh, cultivating crops 
in an alternate form okay so that process of cultivating crops in an alternate form is called crop rotation so what actually uh, we are getting the ben what benefit we actually getting from the crop rotation let us know okay crop rotation is ensures that the same crop will not grow continuously and lead to erosion of the soil fertility okay understood as i have uh, as we have discussed earlier right now before two minutes so that is how that is what it uh, meant okay by growing the crops that we that require different sets of nutrients we can ensure that crop fertility uh, sorry soil fertility is restored okay so by by uh, following the crop rotation by following the concept of crop rotation if we cultivate then the soil fertility will be restored every time we cultivate okay so there is no loss of loss in the crop yield okay so that is about the crop rotation let us move to the next topic okay so protecting from the weeds okay weeds are what weeds are as we have discussed earlier weeds are undesirable plants or unwanted plants that may grow naturally without involvement of human they grow naturally weeds okay along with the crop okay so uh, basically they take up all the new if if any weed is nearby your crop field then they basically take up all the nutrients which is which which uh, is required for your crop okay so that is the main reason why we are protecting we are protecting our crops from the weeds okay so weeds compete with the crops by absorbing all the water nutrients space and light that is what i have said right now let us understand what is tilling tilling is the process tilling is the process okay done before sowing of the crops that helps in uprooting and killing of the weeds basically tilling is the method by which we are uprooting the weeds and killing the weeds this process of uprooting and killing the weeds is called tilling okay so weed sites are the medicines or the chemicals specifically chemicals that is used to kill the weeds okay those chemicals which will be concentrating on killing the particular weed or weeds those kind of chemicals are called as an weed sites okay they usually do not damage the crop but they damage the weeds that is what the function of weed sites are you can see in this picture that uh, we got many kind of weed sites okay so coming to the new slide harvesting once the crop is now matured once the once the crop gets matured it's time to harvest it's down it's time to cut down the crop okay so harvesting is what harvesting is the process of cutting the crop after it's mature after the plant is matured we have to cut down the crop right so that process is called harvesting coming to the next slide okay methods of harvesting harvesting can be done in two methods okay first is the manual method manual method here what happens we need to have uh, we need to have a huge amount of manpower okay so here what the labors they basically uh, use the sickle they basically use the sickle to cut down the cut down the crops to or to harvest the crops okay so sickle is in the in this form this is what sickle this is called as in sickle okay this is sickle and second method here is mechanical method here what happens use machine this is this is some the machines uh, somewhere it look in this way okay the huge machine is called harvester okay is used in mechanical method harvester youth is used for the harvesting okay this is how harvesting occurs by the harvester okay so in manual method we use sickle and here a lot of manpower is required for this method but in this case but uh, in the mechanical method we don't need any manpower or huge manpower okay 
so it can be the harvesting can be done by the harvester okay that is all about harvesting next comes the threshing threshing is what threshing is the process of loosening the grains from the shaft see in this particular crop bundle okay we have shaft and the grains okay here this farmer is beating up the crop harvested crop okay as a result he is separating the the grains from the shaft shaft is uh, which is unwanted substance shaft okay but grains what actually matters for us okay so threshing is what once again i'm saying threshing is the process of loosening the grains from the shaft okay while it can be done manually these days machine is used uh, to separate the grain seeds okay this threshing is also done manually manually and also here for threshing we also uh, can be it can also be done by using machines okay machines okay coming to the next slide winnowing winnowing is what winnowing is the process of separation of the grains grain seeds from the shaft using the help of wind okay winnowing by using the help of uh, by by the help of wind we can also separate the uh, shaft from the from the grains okay so due to the wind the lighter shaft flies away and the heavier grains falls down of course okay by using the wind wind we can separate the shaft and the grains shaft is basically uh, very thin and very lightweight okay as a result as a result when wind is applied okay the shaft uh, will get away get away from the way of the from the way of the grain as a result grains will be separated out as shown in this figure okay next storage once the grains are ex extracted from the shaft grains are filled in a in a in a in a bags okay grains are filled in a bags after filling up it is stored okay the storage of grains is very important step in agriculture okay so after harvesting steps the the ready grains the grains which are ready for storage are stored in the granaries or silos okay the grains have have to be so stored in a dry place if the grains gets in contact with the moisture then there is a chance of chances of fungal infection so that's why that's why grains are stored in a dry place okay that is the main reason okay fugi fugation fugation of storage uh, storage places is carried out by making it free from the microbes okay the storage place is also freed uh, from the micro microbes okay then these are the granaries granaries is uh, the Granaries are the place where grains are stored. Okay. What are granaries? Granaries are the place. This is uh, one kind of room in which in which uh, grains are stored in a dry and very uh, good condition. Okay. Then comes animal husbandry. This is the last topic of this uh, chapter. What is animal husbandry? Animal husbandry is the management and taking care of the farm animals or domestic animals for uh, why do we take care of the domestic animals for the products what they are providing to us okay like milk or egg or meat okay for these products we are uh, we are taking care of of the domestic animals so that process of taking care is called animal husbandry so this was about whole chapter okay if you guys have any sort of doubt you can ask me in comment section down below i will definitely i will try to solve uh, all of your uh, doubts okay and uh, we'll be discussing coming up chapters in uh, coming up videos so stay tuned and uh, thank you thank you for uh, staying with me and uh, Thank you. Bye to all.